Hello, I'm Francesca Bandoli and I'm going to give a presentation on the impact of the exotic pet trade on animal welfare and I will focus on Asian small claw daughters as a case study. So, I'm going to look at pets and their role for humans, exotic pets, the link between exotic pets and wildlife trade. Then I will focus on the Asian small claw doctors as a case study and I will briefly provide information about the species distribution, biology, behavior and conservation status. Then I will look at the main welfare issues of pet otters, the role of social media in promoting the use of otters as pets, what has been done so far in terms of conservation research and awareness activities and finally I will give a short summary and ideas of what we can do in the future. The word pet is widely used to refer to domesticated or tame animals, kept as a favorite and treated with indulgence and fondness. Since the ancient times, humans have shown the desire to form profound emotional attachment to animals. For example, joint burials of people with early domesticated animals, such as dogs, have been described in many archaeological sites dating back to 10-50,000 years ago. Since pet ownership offers people the opportunity to satisfy this desire, an impressive number of pets is kept all over the world. Just to give an idea, only in 2019, 12 million households with pets were recorded in UK and 82 million in the United States. In the past two decades, there has been a growing trend towards keeping non-domesticated animals as pets. These animals are usually defined as non-traditional or exotic pets and encompass a variety of different species. Tarantulas, snakes, lizards, rodents and parrots are just few examples. According to literature, the number of exotic pets is constantly increasing and corresponds to millions of animals. For instance, 200 million exotic pets were kept in Europe and in the United States from 2010 to 2012 making up 34 to 63 percent of all pets. It is well known that pets can have positive effects on the physical and mental health of their owners, such as the decrease of their blood pressure and the reduction of their tendency to overreact to stressful situations. Nevertheless, many bonds between owners and their pets rely on the perception of the pet as almost human and the actual needs of the animals are not taken into account. Therefore, the effect of such a relationship on animal welfare is still widely discussed, especially in case of exotic pets, which have not been undergone the domestication process. The market of exotic pets is mainly sourced from the wildlife trade, and the ever-increasing interest in exotic pets represents one of the emerging trade drivers. Legal and illegal wildlife trade are estimated to be worth billions of US dollars each year. Central and South America, along with Africa and Asia, are the main continents involved in it. As shown in the plot on the right, these three continents present the highest percentages of wildlife trade reports at both national and international level, with Asia standing as the main source, transit and destination continent. Moreover, the main targets are species which are illegally caught in the wild, with mammals representing almost the 50% of all the taxa. The Asian small clawed otter, the species focus of this talk, represents nowadays one of the most remarkable examples of how the exotic pet trade can compromise the welfare and even the survival of wild animals. But before going into more details, let's get to know the species better. The Asian small clawed otter is a mustelid belonging to the subfamily Lutrine. It is the smallest otter species and have a wide distribution range. Indeed, it can be found from India to southern China and in many different countries of Southeast Asia. These otters are able to live in natural and human-dominated landscapes and prefer habitats with slower water bodies. They mainly prey on invertebrates such as crabs and shellfish and integrate their diet with fish and amphibians. They are also highly social animals and live in groups of 10 to 12 individuals. They show high manipulative skills thanks to their sharp claws and involved fingers and also well-developed cognitive abilities such as special memory for food locations 
Indeed, a cognitive study which was carried out in 2013 found that they are able to learn the correct spatial locations of food when involved in a foraging experimental task. Unfortunately, over the last three decades, the wild population has decreased of more than 30%. Therefore, the species has been classified as vulnerable in the Red List of Threatened Species issued by the International Union for Conservation of Nature, or IUCN. But what are the main threats the Asia small clawed otters have to face? Their survival is negatively affected by habitat loss, pollution and overfishing, which very often leads to a huge human-otter conflict. Moreover, in recent years, the illegal exotic pet trade has emerged as a new and growing phenomenon that mostly involves young otters caught in the wild and illegally sold on domestic and international markets. Surveys found that Indonesia and Thailand are the main source countries, whereas Japan is the major end destination. This is not surprising, considering that an otter pup in Japan can be sold for 7200 US dollars in comparison to an average price of only 40 US dollars in Indonesia and 120 US dollars in Thailand. The welfare of the otters is compromised at every stage of the supply chain, from capture to the final destination. As above mentioned, most otters are caught in the wild and removed from their natal group. During capture, they can be injured and even die due to the restraint and handling methods. During transport and sale, they are usually confined in small cages with improper substrates and poor hygienic conditions. They can be transported over long distances, deprived of food and water, and forced to stay in proximity of people and other animals. They are therefore exposed to a variety of pathogens and stress-filled stimuli that can elicit their fear responses and anxiety, increasing their suffering. Due to this, many of them probably die in transit or in few weeks after capture. And what happens to the survivors? Part of the otters ends up in households, where they can suffer from a wide range of welfare-related issues due to the lack of knowledge of their owners that very often ignore their biological and behavioral needs. And suitable living settings, as the one shown in the picture, can induce, for example, physical and psychological problems due to low level of exercise and absence of proper environmental and cognitive stimuli. Otters are also usually fed in appropriate diet with negative consequences on their metabolism and health. Moreover, in case of diseases, they cannot rely on specific treatments since pet veterinarians are not trained to take care of exotic species. They are frequently kept alone or in pairs with limited opportunity to engage in social interactions and express species-specific behaviors. This deprivation can translate into abnormal behaviors, such as self-injurious behaviors, which are commonly associated to poor welfare. All these factors can generate a condition of chronic stress, meaning that the normal biological responses to adverse stimuli are maintained over time. This can impair the author's biological functions and immune system, exposing them to a high risk of diseases and even death. Moreover, many otters are used to entertain customers at otter cafes, a widespread and popular attraction in Japan. Otter cafes are facilities where visitors can touch, pet and feed otters that are usually kept nearby in small cages or enclosures. In addition to the aforementioned welfare concerts, these otters are forced to continuously interact with tourists with no opportunity of choice and control over resources and the environment. Sadly, they have to spend their entire life confined and waiting to be handled to satisfy the curiosity of thousands of people. It is also noteworthy that the welfare of pet otters is strictly linked to the welfare of humans and other animals, as well as to the health of ecosystems. First of all, otters can injure their owners and transmit diseases to other animals and humans. Many cases of pathologies associated with wildlife trade have been already recorded. For instance, in 1991, pet parrots caused the outbreak of Newcastle disease in other pet bears in the United States. 
Instead, in 2003, almost 1,000 people died due to the outbreak of the severe acute respiratory syndrome that probably spread from bats to civet cats to humans. Wildlife trade also seems to be involved in the current spread of the COVID-19. Moreover, if otters escape or are abandoned into non-native habitats because they have become difficult to keep, they can displace native species through, for example, competition for resources and predation, compromising the ecosystem functioning. Last but not least, capture of wild otters can reduce the size of local otter population, driving the species towards extinction. Furthermore, over the last years, much of the otter trade has moved online, reaching in this way a wider audience and allowing traders to easily avoid regulations. For example, a four-month survey in 2017 found online advertisements accounting for an average of 900 otters. Social media have been also found to play a key role in enhancing the market demand, as proven by a study done in 2018 by the charity World Animal Protection. The authors of the study analyzed the role of YouTube videos as an indicator of social media activity. They discovered that otters are usually shown as an affectionate household pet and found in the video's comment section adjectives like cute, suggesting that these videos can drastically encourage the use of otters as pets. But what has been done so far to try to reverse the current trend? Otters have been protected in part of their range, but lack of resources, corruption and the difficult to distinguish captive bred from wild code otters have unfortunately caused in many countries the failure of legal regulations. Nevertheless, extensive research projects have provided key data on trade hotspots and routes, enabling a more comprehensive understanding on the otter pet market. Some international awareness campaigns, such as the successful Wildlife Not Pets campaign run by the charity World Animal Protection, have contributed to unveil the magnitude of the otter pet trade and have helped to communicate the unsuitability of otters as pets. In 2019, all these efforts led to the uplisting of the species to Appendix 1 of the CITES, the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. This resolution has introduced a ban on the international commercial trade, which will hopefully aid to safeguard the welfare of pet and wild otters. So to summarize, Asian small clawed otters are one of the main examples of how the rising trend towards keeping exotic pets can undermine the welfare and the survival of wild species. The information provided confirm that otters are not suitable as pets and that the exotic pet trade exposes them, other animals, humans and even the environment to high and acceptable welfare risks. Thanks to research, conservation and educational initiatives, their legal protection has been improved, but more efforts are needed to ensure their welfare on the long term and to promote responsible pet ownership. But what more can we do? We need to promote the inclusion of evidence-based research on wild and pet otter welfare in conservation strategies. Indeed, only by applying in a holistic approach, conservationists and welfareists can be more effective in influencing the otter trade in a way that benefits both people and wildlife. We also need to increase training opportunities to build capacity and skills within local administrations in order to promote the proper enforcement of the current legislation. Moreover, we need to carry out more educational and outreach activities to raise public awareness and stimulate a cultural change. Finally, we, as consumers, have the power to drive the market demand. So please report any wildlife crime, refuse to like social media pages and accounts on pet otters, and share the message. There is still hope for otters. As it has been highlighted, otters are resilient animals. When protected, they can return and flourish. And thank you very much for listening.